Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Three Roads and Other Stories by Emma Timpany. So this was published by Postbox Press. Um, I was put into touch with the, with the author by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. Um, and I will hopefully be interviewing Emma for my radio show sometime soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. How do the choices we make, willingly or not, define us? A young man working in a menial job finds a way to grow closer to a lost love. A long married couple's relationship is tested by the arrival of a rare bird. With the benefit of hindsight, a woman recalls a childhood episode of acute appendicitis. An outing to a plant nursery brings simmering family tensions explosively to the surface. Two walkers on a beat, unused to the suddenness of a tropical nightfall, lose their way. The chance to grow flowers in a Cornish field brings two strangers together, allowing them both a chance to heal. The characters in these stories find themselves at crossroads, for better or for worse, their lives are about to change. In settings which range from Cornwall's hidden valleys to the grey, golden green of Paris in spring, from central Otago's alpine lakes to the Milky Way's river of light, come bids for freedom, transformations, and another chance to get things right. Emma Timpany is from Dunedin, New Zealand. Her publications are Travelling in the Dark, Cornish Short Stories, a collection of contemporary Cornish writing, co-editor, Over the Dam, and The Lost of Cyrus. Her novella, Travelling in the Dark, won the Hall and Woodhouse DLF Writing Prize 2009, and her stories have won awards including the Sarah Park Memorial Short Story Competition and the Society of Authors Tom Gallon Trust Award. She lives with her family in Cornwall. So I want to start this off with um, this definition here, which I think is great, a great way to kick things off. Trivial adjective of small value and importance. Latin equals place where three roads meet, as tri equals via road. The hardest thing of all is to see what is really there. J.A. Baker, The Peregrine. So the stories that we have in this, we have Stars, The Rememberer, Three Roads, Impressionism, Shepherd's Bush Blues, Perigean, Partum de Pluie, Girls on Motorbikes, A Bird So Rare, Over the Dam, Light Leaves, La Cru de la Saint, Error, Tissue and Flowers. Um, and mostly I'm going to be like talking about individual lines that I enjoyed as opposed to the themes of the stories themselves, but we will see. Um, so we're going to start with stars, and this sounds pretty tasty, so we begin with a nice little reference to food here. Only an hour left until you arrive. I've filled a roasting tray with sweet potato, red onion, courgettes, added rosemary infused oil, dotted on some olives, sprinkled on some thyme. The wine stands open, breathing on the dresser. The table's laid with best white linen, and in a line along the centre I've placed every candle I can find. When the lights are out and the candles lit, we'll be afloat in our own galaxy that cloth the Milky Way of countless stars. The candles and the cutlery are white and silver points of light. And this also, it has the word syzygy, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y, a syzygy of earth and moon and sun. And that's just a cracking word to drop in casually into the first page of the first story. We get a reference to text that they glance at half smilingly, which I don't like because I don't like uh, adverbs. And half smilingly is almost even worse. So we're going to move on to The Rememberer, um, which I didn't have anything out of. And then Three Roads, we begin with a meat pie, which obviously isn't very vegan. Uh, but I did like Three Roads. I didn't tab too much out though. Uh, most of what I did tab was to do with that, again, that reference of trivia. So uh, we have here. Uh, among her work was a series of level one Latin books about the lives of two freeborn Roman girls. Around their necks, Claudia and Flavia wore heart-shaped amulets called bullae containing objects to ward off evil. This custom, the notes explained, was a tradition that the Romans had taken over from the Etruscans because, during in their early years, children were seen as especially vulnerable and in need of protection from evil spirits, witchcraft and harm of other sorts. When girls were betrothed or married, they would take off their bullet and dedicate them to Trivia, goddess of the crossroads. Sissy realised, even with her fledgling understanding of Latin, that trivia meant three roads. And later on we get this, Sissy sat back on her haunches. She'd always thought of crossroads as cross-shaped, the meeting place of four roads. It was suddenly clear to her that the Roman idea was entirely different. No straight ahead, no simple left or right. According to her father's old dictionary of etymology, trivia had also come to mean a commonplace or gutter. It seemed strange that the word's meaning had changed from the name of a goddess worthy of the gratitude of every girl who made it safely through the perilous years of childhood, to a word used to describe things of small value, of little importance, insignificant things. So moving on to Impressionism, she has a reference to it in this, um, the character suffering from an infection, and I'm currently suffering from a, a gum infection or a tooth infection, which is no fun. Uh, on to Shepherd's Bush Blues, one of my favourites, partly I guess because I've been to Shepherd's Bush a bunch of times, I went to uni near there, and um, the character has a bath here, and I, this is interesting to me because uh, I have a bath here now in my house, and um, my shower isn't currently working properly, so I'm only able to have baths, 
and the character she goes on the night after she moved in grubby from work wanting to scrub the gritty layer of city grime off her she ran a deeper bath than usual she was used to showers but there was no shower here and as she slipped into the water the heat and immersion made her giddy for a moment she closed her eyes and the steam rose up around her as she slid back until the water coated her shoulders her eyes were still closed when the noises began dull heavy sounds that came from the beneath the floor as if furniture were being shifted from one place to another and uh, Michael goes off goes out with some actors and um, we get no it's not fun you've no idea what they're like the actors are the worst they drink more than anyone I've ever known but it seems to do them no harm if anything the opposite seems to be true it seems to give them strength whereas with me it only makes things worse all right on to Parisian I uh, must admit throughout this entire story I read it as Peregrine whoops and then we have Parton de Puy um, the only thing I really tabbed out of there is just the title, which means like by the times of rain, I guess. Um, some of these are really short and some of them are longer, so that's why. Uh, girls on motorbikes, cracking little story. I didn't write much about it, unfortunately. And we have a bird so rare over the dam, like leaves. And I've got a couple of tabs here. So we get the, a use of the word smoko, which is a cigarette break, which I enjoyed. I mean, that's Australian slang as I know it, but I mean, I suppose if she's, if she's from New Zealand, probably made it over there as well and we get this which I think is quite cool um, Dora is Mag's pet name for him a shortened form of Dorian she says he never looks any older if anything he's getting younger by the day she says he has an evil pact with a portrait he keeps stashing his attic though he's told her more than once that he doesn't have an attic and we get this as well which I quite like because I'm vegan as I have mentioned <laughs> never go hunting not me what's wrong with you boy I'm a vegetarian, Lenny. You see me in the canteen with my lunch tray every day, and you've never noticed. Then on to La Cru de la Sam. Very short story, but, you know, beautifully written. Then we have Error, and in this a baby has jaundice, and I was born with jaundice. It meant I was all yellow. And it was all yellow. Great line in this as well. He hated the B-Day with its little gold taps that no one had ever, and probably never would, wash their arse in. And then I want to read this uh, little piece out called Tissue as well. I can just read you the full thing because it's a nice short one. This morning I was spring cleaning, wiping the muck off the inside of the windows with pieces of tissue paper gathered over time, from shoe boxes and packaging for example, for this purpose. I should explain that I've not been well, have lain for the last two months in bed looking at the dust gathering on the pane, at the line where the cat rubs her nose back and forth against the glass as her eyes rake the dark garden, at the small opaque impact marks insects leave behind them, at tiny green flowers of some algae or mould, and that fine dark black matter that dunes in the window's corners. As I wiped, I saw a word printed slantwise on the paper, dense of white on pale translucency, visible against the light. The word was poetry, over and over again. Poetry, poetry, poetry. So yeah, Three Rows and Other Stories by Emma Timpany. Um, there is a varied collection of stories, and obviously some of them are literally a page or two pages long, so I didn't really want to go into what all of them were about, especially because a lot of them, they're kind of about nothing and everything in a way. They kind of capture the essence of life which is what I think a good short story does. Um, but they were beautifully written, as you can hopefully tell from the excerpts that I've read. I did enjoy reading this one. I gave it a four out of five. And again, it just shows Isabel Kenyon, man. Every time she sends me something that's a short story collection, it's cracking. Uh, the poetry that she gets involved with is good too, but the short stories in particular really stand out. And books like this are just a reminder of why short stories are a valid form of literature and why we still need to be reading them, you know? So yeah, I gave Three Roads and Other Stories by Emma Timpany a week, but credible, four out of five. Um, and there you have it. So that's what I made of Three Roads and Other Stories by Emma Timpany. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.